As many of my regular viewers will be aware, as this is now my fourth video on the topic, I had to do some investigating about the Gear for Music DD90 Digipad sampler after learning about the case of three identical sample pads, the DB Drums N pad, the DD90 and the HXW Avatar PD705. There's links to the other videos below as it's a pretty long story that I'm not going to repeat here. After all this tied up, I purchased a Gear for Music DD90 with a view to test out just how it matches up to more expensive sample pads like the Roland SPDSX. This comes in at nearly a third of the price of an SPDSX or an Alesis Strike multipad, and it even sits at a lower price with a better value proposition than low cost solutions like the Alesis Sample Pad Pro. Most other options in this price range are pretty poor offerings, so I was quite excited to see how well this would perform. Upon unboxing the sampler, I was initially struck by how sturdy it felt. It's got a decent weight to it. It, the pads feel solid with the rubber not feeling too soft, the knobs and buttons seemed pretty robust and the connections on the back all look decent enough. It even came with a mini jack to jack adapter for the headphones plugged in which I thought was a great bonus. The power adapter isn't up there with higher end gear, it's using a pretty thin cable with a wall wart style plug, but that's not really unexpected on a cheaper piece of gear. It might not be the best in a gigging situation, but for home use or studio use it would totally suffice. It does come with an interchangeable adapter to swap between UK and European plugs which is pretty handy. So far so good. Now I can't really imagine anybody noticing this at all, but maybe some really eagle eyed people might. This unboxing footage isn't the same footage that can be seen at the end of my previous video about the multipads. And the reason for that is that I had to send back my first DD90 to Gear for Music as I ran into an issue that I couldn't overlook. When I powered up the unit I was greeted with a pretty loud high pitched whining noise coming through my headphones. It wasn't so loud that it drowned out the audio coming out when you struck a pad or anything but it was loud enough to hear constantly while trying to use it and it was very annoying. I tried a few of the usual things, I swapped the power outlets, tried plugging it directly into the wall rather than through a multi-gang adapter and there was no change. And of course these are plugs that I use for many different eDrum products so I didn't really think that they were going to be the issue. And then I wondered if maybe my KZ in-ears were a bit too hot for it. I know that they're louder than my older Shaw SE215s. So I tried it with a few sets of in-ears but I got the same sound with just a quieter overall output volume. I even tried updating the firmware to see if that made any difference, it didn't. And and I checked to see if this was only coming out of the headphones or if it was also coming out of the master outputs. Unfortunately it was happening with both. Also when I plugged in my USB stick to update the firmware it was making some pretty weird crackling noises through the headphones too. So that was quite worrying. I tried out a few kits just tapping with my hands and the pads seemed surprisingly sensitive. I wouldn't say that it was perfect for playing with just your hands but the response that I was getting means that I imagined that it would be very sensitive under the sticks. But I decided that I wouldn't just start smacking it in case I needed to return it. When playing some of the samples I could also hear some noise on the tail end of the samples. A slight crackle and hiss sort of just like white noise on the end of the sample. I couldn't work out whether this was part of the sample or if it was related to the rest of the issues. It didn't seem entirely consistent between the different samples but I decided that I would box it up and return it. Fortunately Gear for Music makes the returns process really simple. You can do it all online through your order history and it asks you what the reason for the return is. I chose that it was faulty and then you can pick whether you want a refund or an exchange. So I chose an exchange because I was just hoping it was a bad unit. And then you can choose to drop it off at a pickup point or have it collected so I went for a collection. It was scheduled and away it went a couple of days later. In the meantime I asked about with a few people that I knew had picked one up to see if this was a common issue. One person reported no issues, no buzzing, no whines and another said that they had a bit of a lower pitched hum rather than a high pitched sound and it went away with the use of a headphone amp. A little bit like ground hum. So it didn't seem like a consistent problem and within a week I had a new unit back. Unfortunately it appears that this unit had the same issue. When I first booted it up it didn't seem quite as obvious as it did on the last unit but it was still present and in fact I took a recording of that to demonstrate. You're best off listening through headphones to see what I mean here.
I tried all the same things that I did with the last unit, but once again I had the same result. And the level of noise just isn't low enough for me to ignore. It's definitely very low compared to the samples themselves, but when recording the outputs or amplifying it through a PA, you'd definitely be able to hear it in the background constantly. If you did listen to that with headphones, you'd get a good idea of how this could quickly become very annoying. And also, if you've got headphones on, you can hear the white noise on the end of some of the samples too. It's really frustrating for me, as playing around with it, it seems like the functionality of this pad is pretty damn good for the price. The onboard sounds are decent enough, and most people will be buying these for loading their own samples anyway. Unfortunately, this is something that I didn't bother trying, because I didn't want to put it through too much use before returning it. The AB sample switching seems to be great, and there's a hi-hat foot pedal control. That's two features that the SPDSX doesn't even have. Add that to the fact that it does MIDI over USB, and you've got a pretty great option for a low-cost MIDI control controller that you can play with sticks. If you only want a MIDI controller for Ableton or another DAW or for other MIDI uses, you might still get a really good device out of it for this price, because the internal sounds won't matter to you at all. But I can't help but wonder what the overall durability of the internals will be like if I'm having problems with it straight away. If this had been sent to me as a review unit, I would have tried everything out despite the issue and assessed whether it was still worth considering. But because I bought this with my own money, I just can't justify keeping it. I also got in touch with Nick from DrummingReview.com who, as I mentioned in the last video, reviewed the HXW version of this multi-pad on both his website and YouTube channel, and I asked him if he'd noticed anything similar. As I suspected, since he didn't mention anything in the review, his unit doesn't appear to have had this issue. He's kindly offered to double check next time he has access to his sampler, but for now it appears that only the Gear for Music ones that I've tried have displayed this particular issue. And just for the record, I can't knock Gear for Music's customer service throughout this whole exchange. The returns process was quick and easy and they were quick to respond to my queries via email as well. I did ask before returning the second one whether this might be a batch issue, if anybody else has reported the same issue, or whether there might be another solution that we could try without me having to return it, but I was told that there were no known batch faults. They were willing to let me try out yet another unit, but I'd hit my own personal threshold by this point, so I opted for a refund. They had the second pad collected from me the next day for free, so again, full marks for customer service, and just for generally making the whole thing very easy to deal with. Apologies to anybody that's been waiting for my verdict on this sample pad, or if you think I should have tried out more things before returning it. I was pretty excited to see what it could do, but as I said, I didn't want to rough it up before sending it back, so I'm quite gutted to be honest, and there's every chance that someone else won't have the same experience that I've had, as seems to be the case for some of the people that I've spoken to. So what do you think? Is this something you'd still be willing to take a risk on for the price? I'm definitely interested to see if anything else comes near this price range in the future and what that might look like. But that's all for now. Pop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it or if it's helped you in any way. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want more electronic drum news or reviews, or not in this case. Check out thedrumworkshop.com for new kits and samples for your electronic drums and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!